If you study weather and weather forecasting, you're a meteorologist. It's an exciting career and you get to work all over the world. Meteorologists work for universities, TV and radio stations, nuclear power plants, airports, and even for the Navy. Now, not only is this work really interesting, but these pro weather watchers can make big bucks doing what they love best. So, we're going to sneak a peek into the secret lives of meteorologists. But first, our very own weatherhead Brandon is going to start us out at the very beginning with a look at the wild, wild world of weather. Okay, before we get started, a couple of questions. Are you flooded with curiosity about the world around you? Do the wonders and mysteries of nature blow you away? If you answered yes to either of these questions, then you might be a weatherhead. Now, before you panic, just consider this. Almost everyone you know, from the class whiz kid to the coolest of the cool, all have an interest in weather. Are you going outside tomorrow? So what are you going to wear? You see what I mean? Fashion's fine, but it all begins with weather. So let's get to the bottom of that first. Believe it or not, we're actually living at the bottom of a sea of air. The whole Earth is surrounded by this sea of air, and it's called the atmosphere. When heat sources like the sun and heat from the city react with that atmosphere, it's called weather. Mixtures of gases containing air and water vapor go through constant changes, making weather happen on a worldwide scale. So then does the moon have weather? Got no atmosphere, got no weather. Is that your final answer? That's my final answer. <laughs> so, if meteorology is the study of weather, then what's a meteorologist, you may ask? Meteorologist. A person with huge teeth, a pointy stick, and a large helmet made of human hair, appearing nightly on your TV to tell you there is still not enough snow to cancel school. Uh, well, uh, not exactly. Uh, most radio and television weathercasters are professional meteorologists, yeah, but that's not the only job these pro weather guys do. A meteorologist is actually a scientist that studies and predicts weather. They work in research labs, power plants, for government agencies. Basically, any place that needs up-to-date weather information needs an up-to-date meteorologist. Meteorologists have been around forever. In prehistoric times, the weather watchers were holy men who specialized in forecasting the weather for the rest of the tribe. They would use their powers of observation, uh, along with folklore sayings like, Please stay home. Parade will come. Bees fly away. Dry is the day. So cool! Yeah, uh, sort of like that. Anyway, Aristotle was probably the first recorded meteorologist. He observed the atmosphere, scribbling it down in his book, Meteorologica. Now, lots of his ideas were right, but he didn't base it all on scientific principles. So, eh, sorry Aristotle, wrong answer. That was not my final answer. Time passed, and just watching clouds wasn't enough anymore. The well-equipped weather watcher needed instruments for measurements. Galileo invented the first thermometer. He called it a thermoscope. One of his students invented a barometer, and that showed accurate changes in air pressure. Now weather watching was becoming meteorology. Ben Franklin was America's first meteorologist. He was such a weatherhead that in 1752, he performed an experiment flying a kite during a thunderstorm. Now that was a shocking experience. <laughs> Radar was invented in World War II, and suddenly, meteorologists were able to actually track storms. Today, they use supercomputers, weather balloons, and satellites to help see what the weather is doing and where it's going. In the 1800s, scientists used cameras with mega-long tripods to figure out how tall clouds were. Today, meteorologists use aircraft and lasers. Wow, that hurt. Now, the basic instruments used in weather watching haven't changed in a long time. Meteorologists use a barometer for measuring air pressure, a thermometer for measuring temperature, and something called a hygrometer for measuring humidity. But meteorologists aren't just sky watchers anymore. Now they hang out in these really cool techno labs, observing, gathering, and figuring. Weather conditions change really fast, so it's important to collect data just as quickly. Satellites orbit the Earth, taking pictures of weather conditions all over the world, and supercomputers draw their weather maps. So a single TV weathercast is actually the end product of a worldwide team of thousands of meteorologists using all their tools together. But even with all the sophisticated equipment, the best instruments meteorologists still have are their eyes. 
Weather affects every single thing on Earth. It shapes our landscapes and determines how well food crops will grow. Bad weather conditions like drought means food gets scarcer, making prices go up. Too much rain can ruin crops too. And that puts pressure on the farmers, the wholesalers, and the grocers. If you have really cold weather while the orange trees are blooming in the spring, it can hurt the orange crops, and the farmers get really squeezed. That means that the supply of oranges goes down, and juice prices... And juice prices go up. Good morning. What are you doing? Come back here. Weather can have a huge effect on other things, too. A wet spring and a dry summer make a forest ripe for an outbreak of wildfire. A meteorologist can save the day by warning park rangers about dangerous conditions, like dry, windy days, and help protect the firefighters by telling them where the winds will push the fire and keep the smoke jumpers out of danger. Meteorologists can also warn motorists about dangerous driving conditions, and ships and aircraft get a heads up about deadly fog and savage storms. So this is where forecasting comes in. In 1992, for instance, Hurricane Andrew roared into Florida and then smashed its way across northern Louisiana. It did an incredible $30 billion worth of property damage. But because of warnings made by teams of satellite-savvy meteorologists, more people were prepared and fewer lives were lost. So, the better meteorologists get at forecasting, the more the public trusts them, and that saves lives. Don't go away. The Weather Classroom will be right back.